I feel a little bit like one of those scenes in Monty Python. I've been there all the morning and now for something completely different because I wasn't trained as a developer at all, but I do think I can maybe tell you a story and it may give you another perspective on on Axon and maybe the value of Axonic in the future. Um, hopefully it will. Uh, it'll take me about 15 minutes and, and I hope it will be, will be good entry to lunch in a few minutes. So, I was trained as a, as a medical doctor and when I was ready with my basic medical training, I decided to work in nursing homes to specialize as a nursing home physician. Um, this is in Holland a, a specific medical field where we train doctors and other professionals to care for the needs of elderly and frail people who happen to have often several chronic diseases and are not able to live their lives without uh, intensive treatment and care. And I believe that taking care of frail and elderly people is an essential part of any society. And I think we're doing a good job in Holland, but I do think we can do better. So that was sort of the, the reason for starting Geri Medica, which um, came about around 2007 when I met a colleague at VU Medical Center here in Amsterdam. And we saw of sort of together, we saw the need for better support of professionals in nursing home care. We wanted to help them better to do their work. Um, and that was a start for a company that has a mission to support professionals in delivering the best possible care. And what we want to do is combine the best technology with very uh, good knowledge about healthcare, both about the actual process of giving care and about the content of it. Um, we think and we see that this actually improves care. And there's also another motivation for us. Um, there's a, a too widespread business model in place in this country, and I I'm, I'm fear that it will be in many countries. And that business model is to take old mediocre software, sell it to whoever wants to or thinks that it might help them, and then double or triple your revenue by selling high-priced consultancy to solve the problems you put in there yourself by selling them below standard software. Um, this is really a problem in our healthcare system. Uh, my estimation is that we are spending at least between 50 and 100 million euros a year on keeping technology uh, on screens in, in hospitals technology that probably none of you in this room would ever think of selling. Um, so that's sort of a, you might call it a negative drive, but it's also very positive because that's the first part in trying to get good technology into healthcare. Um, so who are we? Um, our profile, we're a spin-off, started at VU Medical Center. Um, that means that we have the, 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 the drive of uh, improving healthcare, sharing knowledge, and also improving and uh, adding to the amount of knowledge for healthcare by doing research. Our primary service is a, an electronic medical record, which has the beautiful name WISIS. Uh, a little later, other people started using that name as well, but we just ignore them. Um, we focus on medical professionals in long-term care, and um, because we try to really incorporate a lot of domain knowledge, we have to be best of breed. And we think and we see every day that information need in healthcare is exploding. And it is impossible for any supplier, any one corporation to keep up with that information need. So there is only one solution, that is that we as companies create networks of high software standard uh, corporations at, um, have integrated solutions for healthcare. There is, unfortunately, in board of directors still a belief that there might be an all-in-one solution and nobody has ever been fired for choosing IBM, at least not at that level. Um, so that's sort of uh, one of our motivations. Um. So, here we are. Axon and Jerry Medica. 
We started in 2007 and tried to build something in an existing platform and adjust that to our needs, which didn't work very well. So early 2010, we approached Trifork, which was called JTeam at the time. Um, this is the old days, right? Uh, good old days. Um, I, I didn't have any knowledge of software whatsoever, but just knew a bit of the requirements we had. We were ambitious. We wanted to be important and have impact, so we wanted to be, have some, some sort of scalability. We knew for one thing that we didn't know exactly how our application would evolve over the years, so we wanted it to be flexible. And as all the other uh, speakers this morning have said, we want traceability. It is important in an electronic medical record as well, because you want to know who added, who changed, and also who read information. So we need logging, we need audit trails. Um, we had about 500 medical records and 30 users at the time, so we were more of a like more of a good idea than we really had impact at that time. And um, well, to to uh, to cut a long story short, I'm here now today at an Exxonic conference, uh, so it might not surprise you that with this story, Allard at that time gave us the advice to build a new application using. EDA, CQRS, and Axon, uh, which we did, uh, which has been a big success, I think. Um, this is where we are at the moment. Um, we're a market leader in the Netherlands. Around 40% of all nursing homes and also a smaller part of institutions who care for mentally disabled people use our EMR. And we're still growing strong. We're aiming to, uh, to get to 70 or 80% of the market. It's a web application which we cater fully as a SaaS solution to, to the institutions, which is cross-touch optimized and cross-power available. I won't go into any of those details because uh, I won't be able to answer any questions there. <laughs> um, but this is where we are at the moment. And um, i give you a few more numbers. Um, there's about 80,000 electronic health records accessed on any given typical weekday. 16,000 user logins, uh, non-unique, I have to say. Around half a million SOAP messages. And in the Exum framework, we're around 1.2 million commands a day. Um, cumulatively, around 220 million events. And we have a lot of data in there, but that's not all in events. So if I look back, not being a te uh, technician, but if I look back from a business standpoint, from our goals we had and how we met Allard and the idea of using EDA and CQRS, I can say that we have had an enormous expansion of functionality in the application. Um, we have built functionality that we didn't dream of uh, at the beginning. You can think of all the different growth within a nursing home, more disciplines that started using our EMR, more and more different types of information that needed to be stored around the patient. Also, the working processes between different disciplines increased. There's, there's a lot of referrals and having to share information or actually hide it from other people. Um, there's all types of integration with smartphone apps and calendar questions and I don't know what, just regarding the information needs within a, a nursing home. None of that was clear seven years ago. And then the other big part where we have had to build lots of functionality is in the external world. Um, because that patient will now stay in a nursing home but might have to go to a, to a hospital to get treatment. Or you would like to know the results of a laboratory test you did or an electronic communication from a medical specialist or a, a planning tool or the electronic record the nurse uses or well you can think of hundreds of things we're up to about 25 30 external partner uh, applications that we uh, integrate with um, and that is a sort of a complexity we didn't see coming but we have actually been able to uh, accommodate for that without any big problems um, and I think some of our developers are here. An interesting thing that I see in using EDA and Axon is that you have to 
give a lot of your domain knowledge to your developers in order for them to build the right code, in order for them to actually know, well, it's, it's part of DDD, isn't it? Um, to know how the user actually uses the application. And um, I think that is a big part of why our application is being valued greatly um, by the users. So, uh, As you could see by the numbers, we're not extremely big, but we didn't have any performance pre problems either. Um, so there we, we got what we were looking for. Um, and for those integration and notification questions, there's a sort of nice, uh, natural trigger in events that we use to inform others internally or externally about things that happen in an EMR. We have full logging and troubleshooting is easier when you have full logging. So a few more things. Um, I actually thought of the fact that we sort of grew up together, didn't we, Alan? <laughs> Because looking back, you weren't that sure about Exxon yet when we started, were you? <laughs> oh, yes, I was. <laughs> Absolutely. There was one other uh, application in production already, so I was definitely convinced. <laughs> no, but it was probably more of an intuitive click we had, and we thought this, is, this might be the right guy to, uh, to building our, build our application with. And, um, we've grown up, to, up together. We, we've, we've implemented quite a few of the new Axon uh, possibilities that came up over the years. And I like to think that some of the questions we raised also um, were, were implemented in Axon the other way around. And hopefully this will continue for, for a few more or many more years. Um, we're doing some machine learning projects. Of course, machine learning is hopefully going to be very valuable in healthcare as well. And you might uh, understand that as we're using events, and we have a lot of metadata on what happened in the application, we've already noticed that machine learning might be very interesting in combination with uh, an event-driven architecture, because you can actually use the metadata as well for uh, machine learning uh, intelligence. Um, uh, this is very interesting. It's, in my world, not more than uh, a very nice opportunity that is going to grow. Hopefully, an Exonic conference in a couple of years, we can show some more there. And last but not least, um, being a spin-off of FIU Medical Center, we really, really want to um, stimulate scientific research. There's not a lot done in healthcare uh, within nursing homes at the moment, and we believe that we should do that. So. The nice thing is that we have lots of metadata in those events, and that has proven to be useful for scientific research as well. Um, and I'd like to show you one example. Uh, Hilko Bouwstra, a, a Dutch uh, nursing home physician, published this article. Um, and it's um, a research done on elderly people who come to a nursing home for geriatric rehabilitation. And he had, has been able to find such detailed information exactly on how people rehabilitate that he was able to publish this in a, a very well-known American, in my sector, very well-known American journal. Uh, <laughs> um, and an interesting thing is that researchers in our field were used to be able to work with like 100 or 200 or 300 records because they would have to gather the information by pen and paper. Hilco had 16,000 plus records to base his research on. So his reli reliability intervals are, are like so much better than anybody had ever done. And this, is a, uh, this was the start for uh, real acceleration in, in medical research in our field right now. So it's a thing I'm proud of, although we're not doing the work, but we at least sort of uh, catering for the researchers to, to get their data. So, um, finishing off, um, thank you for having me, Alert. I hope um, if any of you ever in your uh, career get the opportunity to uh, put your skills and talent to work in healthcare, uh, I would ask you to consider to do so because we need a lot of good people. Um, and I think that you might find it very rewarding, and I'm sure 
it will put a smile on your face if you were to do so. Thank you very much.